class of 2026. I'm going to take my mask off because there's currently no one here. My name's Mr. Locker and I am the junior senior high school principal. And on behalf of everyone at the school, we'd like to welcome you. Though we're starting remotely, we look forward to when we can be together in the future. The purpose of the video that you're about to watch is to serve as a transition. It's to provide some information to you and to your family to help ease any anxieties that you might have and to answer any questions. A team of teachers has put together this short video to welcome you into our school family. Hey there, this is Mr. Ristek, and I'm going to show you how to use Google Classroom. First and foremost, one thing I would do is sign in using Google. When you get to the Google homepage, go up to the little waffle, as we call it, or the Google Apps. Um, but one of the things you should see is Google Classroom. Click on that. It should bring you to Google Classroom. Mine only has one thing. I just created an example class. You might see a bunch of them here that your teachers have invited you to. Here is one of the classes that I created called Example Class Period 1. So when you click on it, you see a bunch of different things. Um, you might see a Google Meet code up here, which we'll talk about another time. But one of the things you'll see is a bunch of information down here. Uh, I've included the teacher Google Meet. This is the link to link into Google Meet. Um, and then I've also posted two different kinds of assignments. So the first assignment, I created one called Tell us about yourself. This is over here. You'll see that there's a space for private comments. It says, tell a little bit about yourself, include your name, what you prefer to be called. And all you would, it says, add a class comment below so that everyone can see. So you would just complete the assignment, submit it. And then whenever you're done, make sure you always do this mark is done um, or turn in sometimes it says. Then that assignment is turned in. But you can also look, go back to this to do. There's an area where it says to do. There's an area back where you go into your class where it says upcoming, view all. You've turned in this assignment here. You still have this one assigned, so you can look into this one. Um, if you go into the actual class, here's an assignment posted with a document. Um, you'll see that there's a spot up here where it says your work. You would just click on this one. I've made a copy for everyone. The directions are clearly said. You would just type right in here. Once you've done that, you can hit turn in. So it's a different link here. Once you've done all that, you should see on upcoming, it says, woohoo, no work due soon. Um, Google Classroom is a great tool. There's a lot of different places where you can find things. Here's a space designated just for classwork. Um, these things that says due tomorrow. But if you look at it, it'll say turned in. Once you click on the actual assignment, if you click on this one, it says turned in. So it's a way to sort of tell what you need to do still. There's a place called To Do, which I really like. It should give you a list of all your classes work. So that's another place where it might be helpful to go. You can always go back to that menu and find other classes. That's the basics of Google Classroom. One of the things that many of your teachers are going to ask you to do is join Google Meet in order to hold class virtually. In order to do that, typically your teacher will have had to post a link. In order to join it, just click on the link. You'll see it says you'll be ready to join. One of the things that I always suggest you do is start by muting your microphone by turning it off right here before you hit join. Once you do that, you can hit join now. I have my camera blocked. Let's say that I called on you to talk. And I said, Bob, it's time for you to talk. You would unmute. Hi there, it's me. And you are answering questions. It is a lot easier to follow those simple rules. If you ever have to present something, you would just click this link down here. It would show your screen. You'd follow instructions as need be. When it's time to end your class or your meeting, your teacher will usually have indicated that. You go here, the leave call button. Looks like when you hang up a phone, click that button and you are out of there. You can return to the home screen. You can rejoin class if you accidentally did it. But that's the pretty basic part of how to 
use Google Meet. Following a schedule virtually is really not as difficult as it might seem. You'll notice that there's periods listed, what it is, homeroom, reading, seven, world history, etc. The marking periods is where it gets a little interesting. We'll talk about that in a minute. The days of the week that you have it, the room that it would be in if we were in school, and the name of the teacher. The first thing that I always tell students to do when they get their schedule is go to this area down here where it says 4A, 4B, 5A, and 5B, 6A, and cross those out because those are for the upper classmen. For your purposes, you can change 4A to 4. You can change 4B, 5A to 5, and 5B, 6A to 6. That'll make following the schedule much easier. The next thing I always do is look at periods three and seven. Those are typically reserved for the rotations. You'll notice that some of them have marking periods. Almost every other class has T1, T2, T3, T4. That represents each nine weeks. So you're looking for first nine weeks for the first term. You're looking just at the first one, the one that says T1. I would highlight that one. Similarly, I would do the exact same thing for seventh period, the other rotation period. following your schedule, you'll notice you start with homeroom, then you go to first, second, your first term of third, fourth is lunch always, fifth, sixth, your first term of seventh, and then eighth. Now, in terms of slight differences, you might also see that third period, you might have band and or chorus or both. Um, in those cases, you would have both of these, but instead you'd have um, like band would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then in this case, Tuesday, Thursday, you'd have chorus. So it's a little bit different for each person. Now, in terms of times, notice that here we have homeroom scheduled for 8 to 8, 10, um, in which case you'd go onto your Google Classroom and go into your homeroom period. And there will be some steps for you to follow, which I believe will come in a different video. But let's say we're starting just with period one. So at 8.15, it's time for you to go to period one. Refer to your schedule, period one. It says I have reading seven with Mrs. Carroll. So I log into my Google Classroom, just like you saw earlier. And I look for reading seven. Oh, here it is, reading is right here. Click on your Google Classroom and start working on that class. When it's time to switch classes, let's say it's 8.45, you leave your reading class when Mrs. Carroll dismisses you. You have about five minutes if you have to use the restroom or if you need to grab a snack or to get your other, your next class's information or your books or whatever. You have to be in your next class, which is World History with Mr. Batsko at 8.50. So I return back to my Google Classroom and I had gotten out of reading. Now I go into World History. Now, let's say uh, you go through your rotation with Mr. Banizak in phys ed, third period, and it's 9.55. That means it's time for lunch. So go upstairs or go to your kitchen and get your lunch. You have until 10.30 to be in your fourth, I'm sorry, your fifth period class. I didn't even change it on here. Fifth period class which in this person's case is oh, the best class of your day, Mr. Istic, Pre-Algebra 7. Go back into your schedule, enter Pre-Algebra. Now, one of the suggestions I always suggest uh, for seventh graders to do is to move their schedule so that it's in order, period one, period two, period five. Following the schedule should be a pretty easy thing, and I think you guys will do really well with it. Good luck. Hi, seventh grade. Welcome to the junior senior high school. I'm Mrs. Barnes, a school counselor. You have so many people in our building that support you and I'm one of them. I encourage personal growth, such as 
gaining positive social skills, setting career goals, and reaching your full academic ability. Be on the lookout for ways that we will work together during our time online. I can't wait to meet you. See you soon. Welcome to the Junior Senior High School. Class of 2026, we hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to remove my mask because there's no one in the building. As we approach our learning this year, we'll have a focus on the safety of everyone, student engagement in the classroom, and a greater sense of flexibility. But with that flexibility, we'll also require responsibility as we strive for excellence in everything that we do. I'm certain that this will result in the strengthening of each individual's character and the character of our entire school community. We look forward to seeing the contributions that you're going to make to our school community.